What happens when the world's peacekeeping body is divided? A question that now sadly isn't hypothetical. In the heart of international diplomacy within the United Nations Security Council, a chasm has opened, revealing a disturbing division over the ongoing war in Gaza. This division is not just a simple disagreement, but a sign of a more profound and dangerous dysfunction. Secretary General Antonio Guterres has raised a red flag, warning us that we are teetering on the edge of an age of chaos. The Security Council, the world's primary platform for addressing global peace issues, finds itself in a deadlock. This deadlock, born out of geopolitical fractures and diverging interests, has paralyzed the Council's ability to effectively respond to the crisis unfolding in Gaza. But this isn't the first time that the Council has been divided. As Guterres pointed out, there have been times in the past when the Council's unity was tested. However, what we are witnessing today is far worse. The current dysfunction runs deeper and poses a greater threat to global stability. Unlike the Cold War era, when well-established mechanisms help manage superpower relations, today's multipolar world lacks such mechanisms. This absence leaves us vulnerable to the unpredictability and potential chaos of international relations. As we navigate this turbulent period, Guterres's warning rings in our ears. We're entering an age of chaos, he says, a dangerous and unpredictable free-for-all. The rulebook of international diplomacy seems to have been thrown out the window, replaced by a system operating with total impunity. This division, this deadlock and this dysfunction within the United Nations Security Council, the world's peacekeeper, is a cause for concern for us all. It signals not just a divided peacekeeper, but a world teetering on the brink of chaos. As Guterres warns, we're entering an age of chaos, a dangerous and unpredictable free-for-all with total impunity. The conflict in Gaza, now in its fifth month, is a stark example of this chaos. It's a situation that's been steadily escalating, with Israel's ongoing war against Gaza causing widespread devastation and an increasingly dire humanitarian crisis. The southern city of Rafah is at the heart of this crisis, a place where over half of Gaza's 2.3 million residents now live, most in makeshift tents. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has voiced deep concerns over Israel's intent to focus its war efforts on Rafah. He warns that such a move would exponentially increase what is already a dire humanitarian situation. The consequences, he warns, are likely to reverberate throughout the region, adding a new layer of complexity and danger to an already volatile situation. The Israeli regime, undeterred by international concern, has continued with its campaign, even threatening a new ground assault on Rafah. The implications of such an assault are severe. Over 1.4 million people are sheltering in Rafah, having been ordered there by Israeli forces, which previously described the area as a safe zone. This sudden escalation has the potential to turn an already desperate situation into an outright catastrophe. The situation in Gaza is a chilling example of the age of chaos that Guterres warns us about. The Israeli regime's actions have led to a complete siege of the territory, cutting off essential supplies like fuel, electricity, food and water to more than two million Palestinians living there. This siege, as Guterres describes it, is already a humanitarian nightmare with untold regional consequences. The situation in Gaza is a stark reminder of the urgent need for global cooperation and decisive action to prevent further escalation and bring about a resolution to this devastating conflict. In the face of this global crisis, what can we do? We heed the clarion call of UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. He urges the world's leaders to seize a golden opportunity, the forthcoming summit of the future. This summit isn't just another meeting in the calendar, it's a critical juncture to shape the course of multilateralism for years, perhaps even decades to come, but that's not all. As conflicts grow worldwide, a reform of the international financial system is not just necessary, it's imperative. It's a call to rethink, to rebuild, to reimagine. It's a call to create a system that's inclusive, equitable and sustainable. A system that doesn't just respond to crises, but anticipates them, mitigates them, and, in the best of all possible worlds, prevents them. This is not a time for passivity, it's a time for action. It's a time for everyone, from world leaders to each individual, to take a stand, to make a difference. The world is watching, stay informed, stay involved. The future of our world depends on it.